Today we're going to be going over common troubleshooting items for FireGear's TFS ignition system. If your fire pit is still not working after following the steps in this video, please reach out to our technical service team at 800-966-8126 or visit www.firegearoutdoors.com. Let's take a look at the stainless steel valve box, which houses several important components. This is the electronic gas valve with a solenoid. Located next to the gas valve is the electronic ignition module. To service these items, you'll need to pull out the ignition module by removing the screws on the outside of the valve box. Here's a quick overview of the wiring within the system for your reference. You can also find this diagram inside your TFS instruction manual. The ignition module can be considered the brain of the TFS system. It handles all the communication between the remote and the gas valve. This is also what you will use to learn a new remote control to the system by pressing the Learn button on the side of the ignition module. The gas valve is what controls the gas flow to the fire pit. Here you will see the orange and white wire pair that connect to the igniter assembly, as well as the green and white wire pair that go to the ignition module. Located on the gas valve is the latching solenoid that controls flame modulation. That latching solenoid is connected to the battery pack. The battery pack sits outside of the stainless steel valve box. You must ensure that the battery box is placed away from the flame. The best location is outside the walls of the fire pit. A plastic junction box is provided for proper installation. It is imperative for you to protect the battery box from the elements, as the fire pit will not function if the battery pack is wet or damaged. Four AA batteries would have been installed during the initial installation and will need to be changed out a minimum of once per year or more, depending on the frequency of use and windy conditions while in operation. For proper operation, replace batteries as needed and remove during long periods of non-use or off-seasonal non-use. If the batteries are installed incorrectly, the system will not operate. Make sure the positive ends and negative ends are in the correct position in the battery pack. If available, use a multimeter to determine DC voltage of each battery, which should read a minimum of 1.4 volts DC. All four batteries should total no less than 5.3 volts for proper operation. The igniter assembly comes mounted to the burner pan from the factory. The most important thing about the igniter assembly to look for when diagnosing an issue is the alignment of the igniter probes. Remove the screen cover and ensure that there is a 1 8 inch gap between the two igniter probes. Another item to look at is the thermocouple. Make sure that the thermocouple is completely free of any media or debris. This is the remote transmitter used to light your TFS fire pit. It is battery operated, so make sure that the battery is installed correctly. You must change the battery at least once per year or more depending on the use of the remote transmitter to ensure proper operation. If your remote is not operating your fire pit, you should try to relearn the remote to the ignition module. On the ignition module, find the Learn button. Press the Learn button on the module and you'll hear a single beep. Then press the Off button on the remote. You'll hear a series of rapid beeps that indicate the module has recognized your remote transmitter is now learned to the module. The TFS system requires time for the RF signal to reach the igniter probes. When turning on your fire pit, press the on button and hold it for three to six seconds to allow proper communication to tell the fire pit to turn on. You'll hear a series of sparks from the igniter probes if the remote is working. Make sure that the remote transmitter is within the 25 foot operational range of the control module. Ensure the batteries in remote transmitter handheld 
are fully charged and properly installed. Make sure the battery pack's four-pin connector is securely connected to the battery pack and control module. If using optional AC adapter, ensure that the AC adapter leads are securely attached to power connection on the control module. Also ensure that the AC adapter is connected to a live 120 VAC power outlet. Ensure remote off switch on control module is set to the remote position. Ensure the control module has learned the transmitter's security code. You can find that process in the remote transmitter section of this video. Make sure that the remote transmitter is not placed or mounted to a metal surface, which will reduce the operating range. The control module will generate a spark at the igniter electrode if the system is in the on position, but does not sense a flame. Make sure that the flame sensor electrode is clean. Soot buildup will insulate the electrode and will not allow for proper flame sensing. Make sure that wind does not blow the flame off the flame sensor. The sensor screen cover and the appliance media provide shielding from the wind. Ensure that the sensor screen cover and appliance media is properly positioned per the appliance instructions. If wind is too strong and the flame will not maintain contact with the thermocouple flame sensor, the appliance should not be operated. Ensure that the black and red leads from the battery pack are securely connected to the red and black leads from the high-low latching solenoid located on the valve body, red to red and black to black. Verify that the selector switch on the battery pack is set to latching solenoid only. Check functionality with all transmitters to determine if there is an issue with the main control system or an individual transmitter. If the issue is with an individual remote transmitter, make sure that the batteries in both the remote transmitter and battery pack are installed properly and fully charged. Ensure the base media is at least one inch in diameter and top media is no more than one inch over top of burner. Ensure all shutoff valves and valve is fully open. Check for spider webs inside burner orifice. It is important to make sure that there are no spider webs inside the gas orifice as it can cause serious gas flow issues. Was the correct gas line size ran to the burner assembly in accordance to the international gas line size chart? You can find our gas pipe sizing chart on our website or within your installation manual. Excess dust and sand from media, as well as seasonal buildup from leaves, dust, and dirt may be blocking the weep holes to relieve water. Remove all media and unplug weep holes. Clean or install new media free of dust and dirt. Ensure fire pit enclosure has proper drainage for water and proper ventilation to dry out. We recommend purchasing a cover or lid to keep excessive water out of the fire pit. If this is a new installation, it is possible that water had gotten into the gas line during the gas line installation right before final connection was made to the fire pit and main gas supply source. Check media to ensure it is not too tightly packed around the burner tube. Ensure a non-whistling stainless steel flex connector is being used. Do not use the yellow flexible stainless gas lines commonly used for the installation of gas kitchen ranges or gas clothes dryers. This error is the ignition safety error. It means that the spur burner or a pilot light did not successfully light within 15 seconds. To clear the fault, press off button on the remote transmitter. Then press and hold the on button for three to six seconds to attempt reignition. Ensure gas supply is turned on. Ensure that the gas line is purged of air. Air is common in the gas line if the appliance has just been installed, has been disconnected then reconnected to the gas line, or if the appliance has been unused for an extended period there is a possibility that air can build up in the gas line. Ensure that there is no blockage in the gas line, such as water. Make sure that the flame sensor electrode is clean. 
soot buildup will insulate the electrode and will not allow for proper flame sensing. Ensure orange-white leads from the module are plugged into the pilot connection on the valve body. Ensure green-white leads from module are plugged into the main connection on the valve body. Verify lead from igniter on electrode assembly is connected to the I terminal on the module. Verify lead from flame sensor on electrode assembly is connected to the S terminal on the module. Verify that the black ground lead from the module is connected to a proper ground on the appliance. This error is the sensor safety error. It warns users the flame sensor has detected a flame already present when the ignition sequence was initiated. This fault will also occur if the flame sensor is shorted to ground. To clear the fault, press off button on the remote transmitter. Then press and hold the on button for three to six seconds to attempt reignition. Check if flame is present when valve is turned off. If it is present, you will need to replace the valve. Ensure that the thermocouple flame sensor electrode is not touching the burner or another metal surface. Check to ensure both the ground wire from the thermocouple and the module is connected to the gas valve. If the previous steps do not work, replace the thermocouple igniter assembly. If none of those options work, you will need to replace the ignition module. This error is the thermal safety or overheat protection error. It is warning the user that the module's internal temperature has exceeded 170 degrees Fahrenheit. To clear this code, push the off button on the remote. The internal temperature of the module must cool below 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the module has cooled below 170, then you can attempt reignition. Ensure that there is proper ventilation to the control module. Do you have vents on opposite sides of the fire pit enclosure, ensuring 18 inches of cross ventilation? Was the module removed from its location in the valve box and moved to an unapproved location? Is it too close to the burner or on the floor of the fire pit? There's a proper way to place media into a fire pit. Do not dump a large amount of media into the fire pit all at once as this can result in damage to the product or introducing a large amount of dust and debris into sensitive parts of the unit. Use gloves and place the media around the burner tubes and arms to just cover the burner tubes and arms. You should still be able to see small glimpses of the burner tubes and arms through the media. Ensure that you do not cover the ignition hood or screen cover of the ignition hood when installing your media. Make sure you take the media out and clean the pan, burner, and igniter assembly once per year to ensure proper operation. Thanks for taking the time to view this video about our fire pit burner system. If you should still have any issues with your product, please reach out to our technical service team at 800-966-8126 or visit www.firegearoutdoors.com.